In 2008, researchers discovered a tree perched atop a rocky outcrop in Dalarna, Sweden, touted to be the oldest tree in the world. The tree, a Norway spruce known as Old Jiko, was dated by dendrochronology and carbon dating to be roughly 10,000 years old, meaning that it first took root only a couple of thousand years after the end of the Younger Dryas, essentially the last ice age, right around the time of the Neolithic Revolution. This tree has been around for about as long as humanity has even been living in permanent settlements and domesticating crops. It has seen the invention of the wheel, the invention of writing, the death of the woolly mammoths, and all of recorded human history. But what does it actually mean to be that old? How is it even possible? Well, Norway spruces, in addition to their sexual reproductive cycle, undergo a process known as vegetative cloning, whereby the root system of the tree can periodically sprout new trunks after the old trunk dies or is destroyed a process which can occur nearly indefinitely. Sometimes it's a forest fire, or a fierce storm, or simply the inevitability of time that brings down the old trunk. But soon enough, there will be a new one, with identical genetic material sprouting from the same roots. So while this current incarnation of old Jiko, what you see here in these images, is closer to 500 years old, its root system is 9,000 years older than that. This ancient root system is the real power. The tree we see above ground is just a periodic, ephemeral flourish. It doesn't take a huge leap of imagination to see the parallels here between Old Jiko and the multiple sacred trees of Elden Ring, supported by an impossibly old and extensive root system. We are, of course, aware of the lively discussion around the matter of interpretation when localizing the text of the game in reference to the Great Tree, what is often referred to as mistranslation. We won't wade too far into that topic today because we believe the textual evidence, as always, is only part of the puzzle. We must rely, therefore, on the story told through visual depiction. Firstly, the silhouette of Old Jiko bears striking similarity to the depictions of what we've been calling the Great Tree Reliefs, found throughout the lands between in ancient structures. Once again, we'll point out that while there are many depictions of sacred trees in-game, relief depictions actually only come in three common varieties. There are the depictions of the Erd Tree, seen above Merica's bedchamber, the Erd Tree Sanctuary, and various structures of Peak Landell like above the inner walls of the city. These depictions seem to emphasize the bountiful canopy of the tree, the emblem of Landell's Age of Plenty. Then there are the great tree depictions, showing an image quite reminiscent of Old Jiko, found throughout the extant structures of the Saint and Tree Empire. And finally, there are the Halic tree reliefs, again showing a unique depiction. The point is, none of these could be mistaken for the other, and each of them is diagnostic, 
Moreover, they would mean quite different things to the various factions in-game. Returning to the case of Old Jiko, we can learn quite a bit about the arboreal processes occurring in the Lands Between. As evidenced by the locations of the catacombs, the root system in the Lands Between is far more extensive than the superficial scope of the Erd Tree. For example, there are catacombs with Great Tree slash Erd Tree roots in every corner of the map, save one special exception, from the consecrated snowfields in the mountaintops of the Giants to the wilds of Kalid and the southern Weeping Peninsula. Compared to the area which the Erd Tree itself covers, this is a vast, expansive underground network of roots. So the root system is impossibly extensive and old, perhaps as old as the lands between itself. We'll leave you to fill in the implications of this, but we'll just point out here that these roots, without any overlying trunk, are likely depicted in the Elden Ring, seen in Furumazula. The roots of this world are truly ancient, and they are the literal foundation of the Lands Between. Periodically, there is a sprout of a tree which comes from these roots. One of these sprouts was called the Great Tree, worshipped in the time before America and Godfrey, but it no longer exists. After it was destroyed, there was a period of multiple competing sprouts known as the Age of the Crucible, and depicted on the Crucible Knight's armor and spears and the Crucible statues. Finally, this era of multiplicity was refined into a single tree, the Erd Tree. This latest incarnation, the Erd Tree, flourished with abundance, attested to in many item descriptions, and symbolized in the bountiful relief depictions. But this Age of Plenty would not last forever as the cyclical nature of periodic sprouting and felling is unavoidable, much like Dark Souls' cycle of fire and dark, or indeed the Buddhist cycle of life and death. So it should be no surprise, then, that as the Erd Tree's bounty faded, some in the Lands Between began to plot for its replacement, and to avoid this cycle altogether. It is certainly no coincidence that the Halic Tree, Mikola and Marika's attempt to separate themselves from the Prior Order and begin a new age, and the fulcrum of a prophecy involving killing the Great Tree or Tree shared root system, is the only tree in game that is conspicuously outside of this root system, based on its location on the map and its visual representation. Likewise, there are no catacombs found in the Halic Tree, because there are no great tree roots. It seems the Halic Tree truly was an attempt to start completely anew, unshackled by the structures of prior ages. Returning briefly to the issue of translation, the process of clonal sprouting exactly explains the brilliant entendre in the root resin description, which reads, in the English translation, quote, the roots of the Great Tree were once linked to those of the Erd Tree, or so they say, and it is for this reason catacombs are built around Great Tree roots." End quote. This implies the existence of a Great Tree that is distinct from the Erd Tree, though they share the same roots. That said, other items or dialogues strongly imply that the Erd Tree and the Great Tree are one and the same. This is not some translation error. It is deliberately and beautifully ambiguous writing to reflect the process of multiple sprouts from a shared root system. There is a famous thought experiment, first recorded by Plutarch in the first century CE, known as Theseus's ship. The thought experiment goes something like this. If a ship belonging to the famous mythical hero Theseus is gradually replaced plank by plank with new wood, is it still the same ship? Often this thought experiment is extended with the corollary question, if you collected all the discarded wood from the original ship and rebuilt it exactly, resulting in two copies of the ship, which one is the real one? Which one is Theseus's ship? 
this is not merely a theoretical concept. Pando, another tree that undergoes vegetative clothing, is estimated to be as old as 80,000 years old. It's not exactly just a tree. If you take a look, it's actually a whole forest unto itself, covering 100 acres of land with 47,000 individual trunks. The point is, they have the same genetics, the same roots, but are they the same or different trees? In tree biology, there's a specific answer to that question. The process of germination, of producing a new plant from a seed, delineates a new entity. But in Elden Ring, these are not questions that can be answered by poring over the game text like it's the Golden Order Principia. They are deeply philosophical, a consequence of deliberately ambiguous phrasing, and ultimately, a matter of interpretation. Of course, just like in our world, in the world of Elden Ring, people have different interpretations of these phenomena, represented by the different factions. One of these factions clearly established dominance during what we've been calling the Era of the Saint and Tree. Their icons are all over the older structures we previously mentioned, like Stormvale Castle, the Fortified Manor, the ancient Colosseums, and most consistently and impressively, in the Divine Tower Bridges. These beautifully worked structures are all completely covered with saint statues and tree reliefs, signifying the power these beliefs had at their peak. We will give these structures the full analysis they deserve very soon, but for now we'll just say they didn't just spring from nothing. In fact, the dominion of the saint and great tree actually arose from within a pre-existing ancient and advanced empire. And it is that empire which we will excavate in our next episode.